Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and today I'm going to be unboxing and testing a new product from Sonnet Technologies, and it is named after this guy, MacGyver. And what would MacGyver do if he was doing an unboxing video in 2023? He would use his trusty Swiss Army knife. I want that knife back, you know. Sonnet Tech presents MacFiver. So let's look at all the things that this single PCIe card can do. So it can hold up to two NVMe drives, it has two USB-C ports up to 10 gigabits, and it has a 10 gigabit Ethernet port. And keep watching to get more info on the 10 gigabit port and the Mac Pro 5 one. So this combo card can potentially free up some of your PCIe slots. So here's my current rig before I put the new card in. I have an RX 6800 XT, which is 2.5 slots wide, which eats into the second 16 times slot. So I have my Bluetooth antenna in that position. Then in slot three, I have my boot drive NVMe it's a Samsung 970 Evo Plus. And then in slot four, I have the Titan Ridge Thunderbolt card, which also works as a USB 3 card. So I took a look at my intake fan, which is the fan that moves back and forth to unlock or lock your PCIe cards. And I was like, wow, look at all the dirt in there. I mean, surprisingly, there wasn't that much in the computer, but the fan certainly has trapped a lot of dirt. And here is my current boot drive. You can see the little rubber bands that were holding on the heat sink have pretty much melted off. So I'm gonna remove the NVMe and put it in the McFiver. So here's the McFiver with the heat sink off. I inserted my one NVMe. I hope to get another one. Will I ever do a RAID 0? Probably not, because I think I'm going to leave this as my boot drive and then use a second one for a scratch disk. And macOS no longer supports booting off a RAID. And look what I just found. It says Sonnet Tech PCB MP51. Proof that this was originally made for the Mac Pro 5.1 in mind. Okay, so first test, I've installed it in PCIe slot four to see what kind of speeds we get. It's a four times PCIe 2.0 slot, not a 16 times slot. The speed should be about the same as my old NVMe card. And just as I expected, I'm getting about the exact same speeds I did with my single NVMe card. So to be able to get the McFiver in a 16 times slot, I had to put it in slot one and move my GPU, my RX 6800 XT, to slot two. And the bummer about this setup is I now lose my other PCIe slots because of this fat graphics card. So now we run the speed test again and bam, big increase here. Now Samsung's Evo Plus is rated at 3,500 megabytes per second. So I'm not quite reaching those speeds, but this is pretty darn good. And if you were to raid two of these together, you're probably gonna get upwards of 5,000 megabytes per second. If this card was in a Mac Pro 7 one, you would probably see better speeds because it's PCIe 3.0, not 2.0, which is probably limiting the speeds a little in the Mac Pro 5 one. Now we're gonna move on to the USB-C ports on the McFiver, but first I'm gonna show you my Titan Ridge speed results via the USB-C ports for a comparison. And the McFiver comes in a little faster on the right and a little slower on the read, but basically pretty much the same. So moving on to the 10 gigabit port, unfortunately this does not work in a Mac Pro 5.1. I plugged in my ethernet cable to see what would happen and it just crashed the computer. It just locked up, does not like it. And as it turns out, the 10 gigabit port only works with a Mac Pro 7.1 or the new M computers that have a Thunderbolt port. You can put this card in the Thunderbolt chassis, then you'll get the 10 gigabit working on a computer like a Mac mini that only had one gigabit. And here's a note from Sonnet's tech support about the 10 gigabit debacle. We initially intended the card to provide all three functions to the older Mac Pros, but by the time we finished the design, the earlier version of the Marvel chip was not available and consequently we used a newer chip which is only compatible with Mac OS 12 and 13. This is why we don't position it for use in the Mac Pro 5.1. Now that being said, of course, I'm running Monterey 12.6.2 via OpenCore, and you can see in the PCI slot, it shows that the Aquantia AQ7113 shows up. Ethernet controller says the driver is installed. So you would think it would work, but they say it could be firmware related. 
but I bet you somebody could figure this out. Maybe MacGyver. So I gave him a call and he said, Sure, Lance, I'm on my way. So while we wait for MacGyver to come save the day, I did test the 10 gigabit port under Windows after installing the driver and it worked perfectly on the Mac Pro 5.1. So it's just a Mac OS that seems to be the issue here. And after looking at the spec sheet on this card, you can't boot Windows off it. No boot support. So if you were thinking you could get this card to have Mac OS on one NVMe and Windows on the other for a dual boot system, you cannot do that with this card. So who is the Mac 5 or 4 now that it's not really for the Mac Pro 5 one like it was originally? Well, obviously if you're a pro video editor and you have a PC tower, this card's gonna do three different jobs and only take up one slot. And it's got that 10 gigabit port and a lot of studios, editing facilities and recording studios are updating their infrastructure to 10 gigabit. And on the Mac side of things, if you have a Mac Studio or a MacBook Pro, the latest models, this card can make a lot of sense to have in an external enclosure alongside your other cards that you need for pro audio work or pro video work. And this is a pretty sweet new box that Sonnet is offering that houses the Mac Studio and an Echo 3, which gives you three PCIe slots. For instance, you could have two Pro Tools HDX cards and the McFiver. So I'm not sure the McFiver makes a lot of sense with a Mac Pro 7 one because it's already got two 10 gigabit ports and it has eight PCIe slots, but Sonnet has a plethora of different card configurations, PCIe cards that you could use in your Mac Pro, like this one that holds up to four NVMEs for a super fast RAID 0 setup. So here's an interesting score. We got the Mac Pro on the left, the McFivers in there in slot one, and we're getting the same speeds I showed you before. But then we look at the Mac Studio M1 Max with a Samsung 980 Pro, and that's on a single Thunderbolt 4 connection in an enclosure and we're basically getting the same exact speeds so the Mac Pro is really holding its own here and the only way you would get the Mac Studio to get faster external speeds would be to raid two drives together and connect them off two separate Thunderbolt 4 ports. And here's someone's results with that exact setup. A RAID 0 with Mac Studio, two drives and two ports, coming in about 5,500 read and write. So MacGyver finally showed up and he said he's gonna use his trusty paperclip to try and get that 10 gigabit port working for the Mac Pro 5 one. Okay, thanks for watching. There's a link in the description for this card. I get a little kickback from that through my Amazon store. So if you purchase it there, you know, you're throwing me a couple of bucks. Helps keep my channel alive. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you on the next Max Sound Solutions video.